gotta love that new thing that uh, they added there. <laughs> Let's stop that for a second. Okay. Hey, hey, welcome everyone to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. I am your host, Kristen Ostrander, and today we have an amazing guest, someone that I've got to personally work with him and his team, and it is just phenomenal, and I'm not going to waste too much time talking about that because I want him to talk about himself and his company, but first, I do have a an announcement. I've been telling you guys this. It's about time. We are doing our first in-person workshop since the pandemic. I am super excited to meet you guys face-to-face -face in person. So you want to make sure you come to the Confident Wholesale Bundlers workshop. We're doing a workshop in Las Vegas in conjunction with the ASD trade show. So who wants to go to the trade show and have a personal walkthrough by yours truly? I would love to be able to walk you through the, the trade show and get you connected with vendors that can sell you product for your Amazon on stores, you really want to be there. So mommyincome.com slash workshop. What is going on at the workshop? Friday night is a meet and greet where we're doing cocktails and appetizers and just meeting each other and getting to know one another before we get to work. Because on Saturday, it is a full day of workshops. We are, it's, it's interactive. You're going to learn the research process like you've already learned in Wholesale Bundles. We are going to put bundles together in groups. So by the end of the day, you're going to have five different bundle ideas to walk away from, maybe even even more as we come up with different bundles. You're going to be workshopping. This doesn't mean you're sitting in a lecture hall being talked to the whole time. You're going to be getting your hands dirty in the research process and actually coming up with bundles and getting your questions answered along the way. And then on Sunday is when your optional trade show walkthrough. So if you're like a trade show pro and you don't need a walkthrough, great, you can just do your own thing. But the optional walkthrough is for those that are uncomfortable or have never been to a trade show. They're looking to make connections with vendors and and I personally will walk you through the show and talk um, with you and with vendors to help you get set up with um, their products, their catalogs, getting you connected with the proper Amazon. Um, Amazon friendly vendor. So you don't want to miss this. It's interactive. It's informative. You're going to leave with breakthroughs and aha moments. That's what happens in the workshop. So many people are like, Psh, mine is blown. So um, for my special podcast savvy listeners, I know you guys like to save a few dollars. Uh, workshop 50 is the coupon code for you to save a couple dollars on your workshop experience. So um, that's only for podcasters. So you're welcome. Uh, workshop 50 mommyincome.com slash workshop. Workshop. Now I want to get to today's guest because um, I'm super excited about telling you about Ian Bauer. He is the owner and founder of Graphic Rhythm. It's a design agency that helps digital marketers, small businesses, Amazon sellers with their visual identity. And what does that mean? That means um, your listings will have amazing uh, infographics and pictures and, and graphics that will help sell your product. So who doesn't want more of that? So welcome Ian to the show. Thanks for being here. Hi, thanks for having me. Absolutely. So tell us a little bit. I, I mean, I could give a bio all day long, but that's no fun. So why don't you tell us a little bit more about you and how you got into um, your starting your company? Yeah, so um, I, I actually started out as a seller. I'm still a seller. Um, and I started in the world of retail arbitrage. Um, and uh, my wife kind of got into it because she's like, hey, who wouldn't like a side hustle that didn't involve shopping? <laughs> um, you know, and then of course, the minute like she was like, the minute a spreadsheet got involved is really when it became my business. And I was like, this is stupid. I hate shopping. Um, and so I, I went and I found a wholesale model and that eventually evolved into including brand management. So we manage uh, other brands on Amazon. And so uh, kind of out of all of that, I had built a design team and a team that was really good at listing optimizations like title bullets and descriptions and A plus content and so on and so forth. And, um, you know, everybody listening to this knows that the Amazon community is a pretty tight knit community. You know, we're all in Facebook groups and, you know, part of masterminds and workshops. And, you know, we, uh, so I, I was uh, networking a lot with other Amazon sellers who were curious about the work that my team was doing to optimize listings. And then out of that curiosity came doing a few jobs and then eventually Graphic Rhythm was born. And so now it's all its own thing and it's uh, you know out there in the world. Um, and so, yeah, that's, that's exactly how Graphic Rhythm got started was just kind of out of a need from the community to you know provide this kind of service. Awesome. So what did you do in your previous before Amazon days? Uh, I was actually a chef. 
Um, and uh, so my last uh, kind of career post was as the executive chef of a private university. And I was able, I started selling on Amazon in like 2015 or so. And then I was able to quit my job and do this full time in the fall of 2017. So that was cool. It was my escape hatch. And then Graphic Rhythm was born shortly, shortly afterwards. Did you, is, was it born because you really saw like a need in the marketplace for this type of, of, of you know, the graphics and the things that you guys provide to listing optimization? Because there's tons of companies and things out there, but um, what, what made you decide that this gap needed to be filled? Yeah. So like you said, like you could go to Fiverr and Upwork and, you know, there's a bunch of places to go and just get graphic design done. But um, what our clients particularly like about our service is um, that it's it's easier to work with a designer. Um, you know, so if you think of like the Fiverr model, let's pick on Fiverr because they're a headless entity. Um, <laughs> you, 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 so like the Fiverr model is kind of like you go there and you, you pick out a designer and you have to do that every single time, by the way, which, which could be kind of frustrating in and of itself. Um, and the designer could be awesome. You know, a lot of my team members have probably been on Fiverr because they were freelancers before they worked for me. But so that's not the problem. The designer is great. But the, the problem is, is that you, the business owner, are responsible for coming up with a design direction, like telling the designer what to do. And you're probably not a designer. Um, and so that creates some problems. So, so you start describing what you want and what you think that this thing should look like. And then the designer is kind of autonomous, a little bit of a robotic, and they just do what you've just told them to do, right? And then you get it back and you're like, wow, this is actually terrible. And it's not really the designer's fault. It's, it's frankly, it's your fault because you were trying to be a, a, a creative director and you're not really a creative director. And so what Graphic Rhythm does differently is that we we take it away from you. You're, you can't be responsible for this. So we, we take the whole thing away from you. Um, we actually take away the copywriting. We take away the market research. We take away um, image sequencing. And we take away a whole bunch of stuff. It's really a done for you service. And so we, we do as much of that for you as possible so that it's less frustrating for you. You could basically just, all you have to be an expert in is your product, period. You just tell us about your product. Why is it awesome? How are the features and benefits great? What is the unique selling proposition? Uh, who is your target market? And then we'll take care of the rest. And so that's really what makes us different. What I loved about working with you guys was that element because you're so right. I am not a designer. I am a product developer and I develop products and I do know my target audience and I do know my, uh, the features and benefits, but your guys' intake form was, was so phenomenal because you really did that. Like I've had experience. I was that person who went to Fiverr and got some things and had some things made. And um, I came to you because I'm not a, a graphic designer, nor do I want to be. I love the done for you um, style that you guys have and the communication levels of you guys get, you, you, you have the, the intake form was, I mean, fantastic. Whatever, for, for those of you guys who are like intake form, that kind of sounds scary. No, they ask you all the great questions and it's kind of a set it and forget it. Once you submit that form, all of a sudden you guys are coming up with different, you know, designs. And I, I was very, very impressed and pleased with what um, I received from, from your team. And so when it comes to that, what are, you know, obviously it's a philosophy that you guys have that your visual, your visual representation of your product is everything. I, people, I believe people buy with their eyes first and with Amazon, they obviously have to type something in, but then there's going to be hundreds of options. And so talk to me about how your graphics are improving the sales of people's products. Right. Yeah. So, um, it's kind of, um, one of the things that I think that, uh, some sellers do poorly or do wrong is they think of Amazon the way you would think of maybe like eBay or Shopify, which is that, especially Shopify, because um, you, if you have your own e-commerce site, you're not really competing with anybody on your own website, right? If somebody's on your site, they're like there, they're in your ecosystem. You can sell their, sell your product across pages and they could go to a special page. that's all about your product and, you know, but with Amazon, all you get is that listing, right? And so if you treat it the same way, you're in a lot of trouble. And what that looks like is putting up photography of your 
products instead of advertisements of your products. You know, Amazon gives you for most categories, seven supporting image slots, right? Each one of those is an advertisement and you really have got to start thinking about it as an advertisement. So then when you approach it from an advertising perspective, it changes the whole approach to the designs. Um, and so we look at um, what is the market uh, market uh, or, or funnel position of the buyer. Typically, a Amazon shoppers are going to be um, solution aware. So they're not shopping for back pain remedies. They're shopping for lumbar support or massagers or whatever it happens to be. And so, you know, um, that's mistake number two we see a lot of times is there's a lot of trying to educate the buyer. Uh, which is a mistake because your buyer is already educated. You know, you're not going to go into why they need a lumbar support. They already know. They already went to Google. They already they already figured out that this is the solution to their problem. Now they're looking for a product that's the best product for that. So if you're wasting your space talking about um, things that are, aren't relevant to that market position, that funnel position, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. And you may be surprised, and people watching this or listening to this might be surprised that I'm talking so much about copy. Uh, and not so much about design. And when I when I say talking to your customer, I mean through the images. The images are really where conversions happen. You know, your title uh, and your main image get people on your listing, but your images are really the thing that are going to get them to convert, that are going to get them to buy. And in order to get them to buy, you have to be able to. Um, what we we say we like to articulate what they love, what they hate, and what they're confused about. Um, so we do that through like looking at reviews and looking at the Q and A section. And then we also need to articulate the things that they expect. Um, if you've ever gone on Amazon, um, the way that I like to shop, I've never done an official study of everybody shops on Amazon the way that I do. Uh, and I, you know, you never know how much is colored by the fact that you're a seller, but like I open up a million tabs. Like I type in my search thing. I just keep opening a new tab, open a new tab. Right. And then we play the prices, right. Where we, or, or whack-a-mole where we start like, all right, you're eliminated, you're eliminated, you're eliminated. Right. So <laughs> it's Amazon shopping whack-a-mole. I kind of yeah. love that. Yeah, I do. <laughs> it's, it's it's really hard to do that on the phone because I a lot of times I'm shopping as on the phone, right? But I, I will tell you that like I tend to the I love what you said about people shopping for solutions. Everybody listening listen to that again, hear that again, because your Amazon customer is not walking and browsing through Target, looking at stuff that catches their eye. Usually your Amazon customer is looking for something specific. And like Ian just said, a solution to a problem. They have a problem, they realize what they need. And so, so many people waste their copy, their images, everything else, like like Ian was saying on educating the buyer. They, they're already, like he said, already educated. I love how aligned that is with uh, my own thing thinking about how we shop because we really are, we need to talk about the benefits of this product because your customer's already looking for your product. They've already landed on your listing. So now it's about closing the deal, right? The images and the copy are closing the deal. It's not trying to say, hey, we have a great solution for you. They already know because that's how they landed on your, on your listing. So now it's about closing the deal, telling them why this product is going to solve their problem the best way. So thank you for bringing that up because it's so important. I think so many people miss that and they waste too much time on their copy being less and I don't mean salesy but like let's be real we're selling a product up against many many other competitors and why are ours different in visual representation and professionalism is extremely important because people are going to see your picture your image and they might even pay more for something else that's less quality just because they have better images better graphics and they they point out their benefits better than you so how how are you using graphics in order to um kind of close the deal on these sales yeah so when it comes to the graphics um you know the design really comes down to a, just a few things and we we call us our boom factor design but the fact is is it's really just good design and a good design focuses on a few key things first of all um one of the things that we make sure is that the copy is for it's copy forward when it's appropriate there are some um there are some products where we want to put the product forward but most of the time it's going to be copy forward um so is the, is the copy clear, easily read? Can you see it? You know, does it look good? And then the other thing is a clear and intentional visual hierarchy. So a visual hierarchy is 
um, the way that you consume an image, right? So you look at an image, what's the first thing you look at? What's the second thing you look at? What's the third thing you look at, right? And actually, if, um, so you're going you're gonna to consume an image no matter what, right? And we want you to consume it intentionally, right? The designer wants to direct that. The designer is going to be in control of your eye. So that's why it's a clear and intentional visual hierarchy that the uh, viewer is consuming this image in the correct way. So maybe we want them to look at the big lifestyle photo, photo first, and then their eyes go over to the headline and then read the subheadline. Um, so then the other thing is that we want um, the design to be more than the sum of its parts. Okay. Uh, and this is, again, this is just good design. Uh, sometimes designs can look decorated where we're just putting graphical elements in there just for the sake of it. We try and avoid that. We want the design to really support the, the other elements and work together to create something that's more than the sum of its parts. Um, and I really don't recommend that anybody who is not a designer, um, you know, try and undertake this. Uh, I definitely think that you are better off learning how to look at a design and understand what's going on, you know, and then let somebody who's made a career out of this handle the actual designing of it, of this kind of thing. Um, so, you know, uh, and then, so that's from the design perspective. And then we also consider image sequencing, which is the, you know, you have your seven supporting images let's make sure that we're consuming those in the correct order, right? Because things happen fast on Amazon. Someone shows up on your listing, you've got a few seconds to keep them engaged, right? And so that's where we get into like the unique selling proposition. We typically want to show off your unique selling proposition in image number two, like what makes you special. Um, and then pretty immediately after that, we want to reassure the consumer that the things that they have or the things that they expect are included in this. So like baby diaper bags, is a good example. You know, when you're shopping for a baby diaper bag, you have a laundry list of things that you know you want. Like these are features that have to have. Maybe that's a, you know, an insulated compartment for bottles or a wipes dispenser, right? If you fail to articulate those right away, then, or if there's any hesitation or doubt or confusion, then they're the, like, you just got out. You're, you're out this round, you know, whack-a-mole. So we want to make sure what uh, what the customer expects is featured. And then um, typically from there, it could go in a, a few different directions. But one of the directions is transformational images. So a transformational image articulates a transformation that you're helping your uh, buyer to experience. So if we talk about our lumbar support again, um, you know, you're helping the buyer go from being potentially like a dad who can't play games with his kids and, and is sitting out to somebody who can participate, right? So how do we demonstrate that? What stock photography do we use? You know, um, so what these call are more, These are more when you're talking about more of that, like that whole lifestyle type photos to where showing like that transformation or showing that, okay, because the first image, right? We have to have that boring, plain, no text, no anything first image, which is terrible, but it's Amazon rules so we have to follow. So then after that, you've got these different seven images. How important, like, so, so I've got some clients that are like, well, my product is not transformational no matter what. How do we kind of capture that? Or there's not a whole lot of like lifestyle photos for you know stationary or I don't know what like coming up with something that seems like it, it doesn't solve a problem but as I teach my clients and customers about about um, wholesale bundling we we design products specifically to solve some specific problems so when it comes to that imagery um, of, of that transformation or that lifestyle photo how important do you feel like that is in kind of closing the sale it's it's really important um, and you absolutely, every single product serves one purpose and only one purpose, which is to help a consumer go from an undesirable state to a more desirable state. That is 100% guaranteed. Um, so if you, and, and we have, I mean, we have really had some challenging products. I mean, think about like we, we have um, one client whose whole business is things like packing tape and brown paper bags um, and like t-shirt bags. And we do a transformation analysis for that, you know, so, or, or you know, a, a, a classic kind of example is a stick of gum, you know, a stick of gum serves to help you feel more confident and have fresh breath and nail a job interview and speak confidently to people, you know, so that transformation is really important and articulating that and whoever, whoever articulates that best wins, as far as I'm concerned, because that's the real juicy part. That's um, creating an emotional connection with the buyer. So 
Um, yeah, it, you're, I guarantee you that your product, and, the, and by the way, the way that you do a transformation analysis is you ask a series of questions. So we ask, um, what, does your, what does your target market have? How does that make them feel? How does that affect their uh, average day? What is their status among their friends, their peers, their family, whatever? And then what are their beliefs about their problem, their the solution, the world? And then we do before and after. So what do they have now? What do they have after? So now they have bad breath and that makes them feel uh, ashamed or worried. And then afterwards, what do they have? Fresh breath and how does it make them feel confident, in charge, powerful, you know? So, and then, and then that all goes into copy and imagery and call outs and infographics to really sell that. You know, the, the crazy thing about it is like at, at first glance, it might seem like your products and services are really just graphic design, but on the end of it, it's entire listing optimization. I mean, I know with my package with you guys that it, it wasn't only, I mean, yeah, there's a lot of upfront work, you guys, there's, this is your product. Like they're not creating your product. They're, they're visualizing your product and giving words and more um it's so much more than that and i don't promote a lot of things because i just don't i'm, I'm particular about like so software and services and, and things like that in, in my business but um i really wanted that visual representation for my product and you guys did the absolute best job hands down as far as that so so what i was actually really impressed with it was my first time using a plus content so um, as a as brand registry and as you have brand registry um, for for different products and services and we have multiple products so we don't just have one brand private label product that we're selling a lot of people do that um, but we're all across the board so um, let's talk about a plus content for a second and how you feel that enhances not just a brand but a product in general how important is a plus content to the consumer in your in your opinion. So uh, A plus content is really uh, late funnel positioning for late funnel customers. So imagine you're down to, you've been, you've been, you made it in the final round of the uh, diaper bag uh, selection process for a particular customer, right? And you've already overcome their objections and you've already uh, communicated what they can expect. Um, and really, they're just trying to make a decision between the last two or three products. Well, how do they do that? Well, to me, that's where A plus content comes in. And A plus content is a way to visually deep dive on some of the features and benefits. It's also a way to um, communicate things about your brand that are unique, not just your product, but your brand. You know, so do, do you have any awards? Can you prove it? That's one of the things Amazon requires is you have to be able to prove it. Um, but, you know, do you, is there something special about your story? Um, you know, those can all be a part of your A plus content. And also A plus content is one of the only places on an Amazon listing where you can legitimately cross sell by linking to other ASINs. So if you have a product family, let's say you sell diaper bags and changing pads or something, you know, you can actually talk about that and sell that in your A plus content. So, um, you know, it's, it's really uh, helpful to kind of those late funnel buyers to really help them make a decision and really guide them into that decision, uh, you know, to choose you and also to potentially sell some of your other products. Guys, that is like a game changer. It's a game changer to be able to link to other products. So say, um, you know, the product that you that, that you guys did for us um, also comes with like a deluxe or a refill set. So linking to those other it, ASINs and things like that to be like, okay, you've already got this. Here's the re refill set. Um, do you have any opinions? I know this is kind of an off the cuff question, but like, do you have any opinions about using that video, um, the section or uploading specific videos for, for that and how that plays into the whole visual representation of that? Because now Amazon's allowing people to upload um, videos, either commercials or um, infographic style videos um, onto their thing. How does that play into those sell through rates as well? Yeah, I mean, videos are definitely always a good thing. And the world is going towards video in big time. Um, everything, everything is going towards video. And so we're actually at Graphic Rhythm. We're looking at adding video services to what we do. I would definitely recommend adding video to your listing if you have a video because, um, you know, people really enjoy it. Uh, you know, I, I would I would recommend, um, you know, there's a few different ways that you could do video. Try and try and make it 
um, as more than just you know what your images are already doing. Like I see a lot of videos where it's basically just a slideshow of the of the Amazon images, and I guess that's fine. But um, you know, if you could have a video holding it or showing it off or turning it or drawing attention to different features and benefits, that would really be ideal. My video that I put on my listing has a 92% watch rate. And it's insane how many people like that more people watch the video than they do buy the product. I promise you that. Um, but they're looking for confidence as a, as a price point goes up. You know, if you've got a $10 product, a $20 product, you know, a video might not be as important. However, if you're getting up into an expensive product, we have a, a product that's over $100. And so people are looking for reviews. But if you're new and don't have a lot of reviews, a video is really your chance to put an infomercial, if you will, on your own listing. You can, it's free advertising. Once you get someone in your listing, you have the right to advertise to them basically on an infomercial and show them how it works or the benefits or the whatever else. So video is super important, but it takes up one of those slots. So um, I know with, with ours, I believe it takes up one of the, it, the images have a certain slot and then you can upload up to two videos maybe. Um, I think ours has two videos on it. Um, as of now, we uploaded another one that shows a component. So um, I got to tell you my personal experience with uh, you and your team and, and my social proof, my own case study. Um, we launched our product in January, which is actually off season for our product, but we just wanted to get it out there and get it into Amazon's algorithm. Without your images and the graphic rhythm that, that we used um, with, with what you guys provided, plus the A plus content, we had about three sales in the first three weeks. So maybe about one a week. After uploading A-plus content, after uploading the images and, and all the things after working with your company, we have steady been selling two to four per week since then, consistently to where before it was really just one here, one there. And so already, I know that's not this first huge takeoff. I'm just honest and authentic. I'm not going to tell you, we sold 10,000 units this week because of that. But it doubled and almost tripled our volume from just starting. And now we're just getting into the season of this product. So I can't wait to see the rest of the summer what happens with this particular product because um, I really believe that once you come to this listing no matter how many tabs open you have with your competitors and your whack-a-mole um, ours is winning simply because we have a more professional uh, upfront um, images and, and the, the descriptions of those. So um, that's just my personal experience with, with uh, you and your team and using those digital graphics and the sell through rates. I mean, even though we're going from one to two to two to three and four now is four times what we started off with. So I can't imagine what that's going to do to transform brands out there that are already selling um, quite a bit and just to up their game a little bit. So do you have any suggestions for people to prepare before they they um, even inquire about some of these things as far as I know you guys have some different packages and things but what is the preparation a seller needs to do before they come to you what do they need to know about their own product yeah so there's actually um I would say I mean you obviously need to know your features and benefits right because that's what you're going to tell us um ideally there, there's a lot that we can help you with. You know, we have we have some clients who like know every little thing. You know, you mentioned the intake form. Most of our intake form is actually optional, right? And so we work with with clients who are who are like, you know, I don't know anything about this product. I just slapped my brand name on it and bought it from China, and I don't know anything about it, right? And then we have the ones that are like, this is my baby. I've invested twenty thousand dollars in it. It has to be perfect. I know everything about it, right? And so which whoever you are on that scale, you know, from and on all the areas in between, we can really help you. The, the big thing that you need to have an answer to really before you start with us is how you're handling photography because um, photography is not included in like our basic or in our base packages. So you have to know, all right, if, am I doing photography? Do I have to have graphic rhythm facilitate the photography? You know, and that's fine. We actually have services where we can facilitate it. We're not photographers, but we, we're, we're tightly integrated with a photographer. Um, and so if you have that answer and you know about your product and its features and benefits uh, and, and stuff like that, then you're ready to go. You can, you can get started um, and have brand registry if you want A plus content or a storefront or Amazon posts or any of those brand registry related services. 
Awesome. So for, for those, uh, when it comes to, um, you know, the digital catalog images, you guys can work with those rather than just, just actual photography photos. A lot of, a lot of our wholesale bundlers are, are getting uh, some wholesale products and then some private label products, and then they, they create these hybrid, um, you know, bundles. And so how, how would that be supported within the system? Yeah. So I have actually got some good advice for folks that do that. First of all, we could totally use whatever you send us. Um, you know, we'll typically let you know if there's going to be a problem, if the photography isn't very good quality or something like that. But I really recommend that you get your own photography done, even if it's, you know, a, a product that you're buying from a wholesaler and you're bundling it with something that you're doing to make it special. Think about it from the buyer perspective. If they're seeing that exact same image across multiple listings, that's kind of a, it's not necessarily a red flag, but it makes you less special. On the other hand, if you have unique photography that was done for you, even if it's the same product, the buyer is going to say, huh, this one's a little bit different. You know, I don't think it's the same one as all these other ones that have the same photo. And it's not actually that expensive to do it. It's about $40 to have one photo, a really high quality photo on a white background uh, taken, or you could do it at home with a cell phone in a light box or something like that. But I really recommend that you do get your own unique photos uh, because it will help make your listing pop. That is a brilliant idea. And I know that intimidates a lot of people because they're like, oh, I'm not a photographer or whatever else. Guys, I want you to understand something. Images sell products, just like attributes sell bundles. You guys know, I hear I say that all the time. The attributes are what's going to bring people to your listing, the way that you title your item. But the image is what is going to make them want more. That's going to make them go from scrolling to clicking. We want the clicking because the clicks, and that's something I failed to mention. Um, that's part of my stats as far as what I kept track of once I had like before my graphic rhythm, you know, designs and then after. And one of the things I tracked were impressions. Impressions upon the listing, meaning people clicked through that listing to see, even if they didn't make a purchase. And my that is the most impressive thing, that at least the click-through rate, which is helpful to those types of things, the click-through rate coming to that and how long they, unfortunately, Amazon doesn't like tell us how long someone was on a page and if they read everything or not, unfortunately. But with that 92% view rate on the video, that gives me some stats. It gives me some stats and the impression rate went up by two. 200%. So we had small impressions and then all of a sudden it started to get more impressions on the listing, which means more traffic is coming. That means Amazon is boosting the listing not from on page one, you know, position five to now position three to now position one. And as sales come in and reviews come in, um, that's just, you know, lifting it up. So I really, I can't say enough about, you know, what you guys offer and your, your services and the quality of the, the quality of product that I received. I don't say that much and often because it's, sometimes disappointing. I've worked with Fiverr. I've worked with some other places and I'm not hating on Fiverr. That's a great place to kind of get started, but you guys hit the nail on the head with the fact that I'm not a designer. And so when you ask me what I want in an image, I don't have any idea. That's not my wheelhouse. And so I want everyone listening to understand that it's okay that you don't have all the answers because you're not a designer. You've been doing your products. You know what benefits there are. You know what problem you solve. That's all you have to do because the copywriting too is where people get free freaked out. How do I write a listing? How do I do this? How do I do that? Although there's tons of training in mommy income and tons of training on the Amazon files and in the wholesale bundle system, sometimes it's worth it. My last question is an ROI type question. So uh, a lot of people, you know, they're, this is an investment, right? So they're investing into their product. Your typical person is going to invest in a product. If you were, if you're going to launch into Target, for example, um, they expect high quality packaging, high quality marketing materials, high quality type stuff like that. So what do you feel like the, the ROI can be if someone's like, oh my gosh, I have to spend $50 on, you know, product photography, which I think is brilliant, by the way, to be able to re position instead of just using the images from other people's catalogs, actually taking your own or having someone else take your own is so important, especially to bundling, because you are creating a new product, even though you're using wholesale sources for your products and kind of grouping them together in a bundle, you are creating a brand new ASIN. And because of that, it 
deserves new fresh images and something that's going to solve the problem because your bundle solves a different problem than somebody who's buying a single unit item. So you guys need to be aware that you are creating a new product. So what is the ROI you feel like on that as far as like, okay, I'm going to have to spend a couple hundred bucks up front to get these wonderful graphics and this copy and everything else. But how do you feel like that translates into profit down the road? Well, so you have to kind of base that on your, what your own sales are like and, and what your expected sales lift can be, you know, but if you, if you improve conversions by 10% and that 10% represents $300 per month uh, in additional revenue, then, you know, a service like ours would pay for itself in the first month, you know, and then everything above that is gravy. And so that's really how I would recommend you look at it. Um, and if you're if you're just starting out and you don't have anything to look at, you know, there's definitely, um, you know, some software out there that will estimate what competitors are selling or what maybe the single item sells, you know, and, and you can estimate based on that what can, what you can expect. But increasing conversions is really is really kind of the the gold of Amazon because conversions Amazon links to uh, ranking really, uh, you know, when people search for lumbar support and they click on your pillow and they buy it, Amazon's like, let's do that again, you know, and they send more and more traffic uh, to your listing because buyers seem to want that when it relates to that search term. So that's really kind of the, you know, the, the magic of the images is that they help with that conversion rate. So if you can improve your conversion rate by 10%, you know, which is a fairly modest amount, what would that look like, you know, and, and how would that, what would that mean to your bottom line? And so that's how you look at the return on investment for something like uh, Amazon images. And you can also, you know, piece it together, you know, you could do the gallery images and then get that going and then come back later and do a plus content. And then if you want to do a storefront, you could do that, um, you know, and then as your sales improve and increase and keep growing, you know, it becomes better yeah. and better. And for, well, for the listeners that you guys aren't going to be able to see this, but I have, um, I have pulled this up. Oh, my tab is closed. Hold on. <laughs> there we go. Oh my goodness. Okay. Give me one second. I'm going to. All right, guys, I want to be able to show you this really quickly for our listeners, um, podcast listeners, you're going to have to go to the YouTube channel, Mommy Income YouTube channel and see this. But this is uh, a sample of Graphic Rhythms work and what they do for Amazon listings. Now, remember, before you freak out and be like, oh, my gosh, you can't put text on them. Yes, you can, just not in the first image. So if you look at some of these in, across different industries, these are the high quality uh, gra infographics and graphic design that they're doing to highlight the benefits, to show the transformations of your product. Everything from like, look at this baby basket right here. This is an entire bath, bath time basket that you see. You see a kid playing with it. You see the product that's solving a problem. You guys, this is a bundle. So this is kind of a representation of what a bundle could look like when you're doing these different things. These are all for Amazon. Here's another one that's got like a, a mom gift set here. Another one of the baby ones. So whatever your product is, they can look at your product they do your intake form and they can really um, help you out with understanding what these images can do for your listing. Now, going back to the ROI, I will tell you that the product that we're using, it makes $53 in profit per sale. So in that first week that we added those on and we had three sales up from one sale a week up to three sales a week, that is $156 of $59 of profit right then. That is covering the cost of what we paid almost to, to do this. So how many sales are you gonna get in order to keep boosting that up? And then you get the organic traffic as people are buying, as people are leaving reviews, it just bumps you right up to the top for your keywords. So that paid for itself in a week for me. And so that's why I was so passionate about bringing Ian and talking to him about Graphic Rhythm and what they can do for your Amazon listings. Cause it's not just about copy, although copy is amazing, um, people are shopping with their eyes and you want them to um, it's prime real estate for you to take over um, those images and be able to present that to your company. So how can people come and be part of, of um, Graphic Rhythm? Well, they can go to mommyincome.com slash graphics. 
and they can get connected with Ian and his team and let them know that Mommy Income sent you and that you're really excited to be working with them. So Ian, any last thoughts? Um, well, so I would just say to, uh, you know, keep your keep your eyes and ears open because Amazon is becoming an increasingly visual marketplace. Um, they're really trying to create brand engagement. So if you've created a brand, definitely pay attention to that. They're introducing things like follow. You could follow brands on Amazon. Uh, Amazon Posts, which is like a social media type service, is actually free advertising right now that shows up on your competitor's listing. So, um, you know, keep your eyes and ears open because there's a lot of opportunity right now on Amazon uh, to, you know, visually engage with your customers. Awesome. Thank you so much for being here. And guys, remember you're in business for long-term sustainability. Even if you're doing bundles, even if you were doing retail arbitrage, don't do that anymore. No, I'm just kidding. I don't mind a retail arbitrage for people starting out, but we want you to be long-term sustainability. And this is part of investing in your business and your brand. Even if your item is seasonal, seasonal has a lot of competition. What sets you apart from competition? Better listings, better images, better products. So thank you so much, Ian, for coming coming on you guys mommyincome.com slash graphics if you want to learn more about this and the services and get your images done to boost your ROI to boost your conversion rate um check out uh graphic rhythms at mommyincome.com slash graphics thank you so much Ian for being here with us and guys thank you for tuning in to this episode of the Amazon files I know you could be anywhere else doing any other thing so thanks for taking me with you at this week we'll see you same time same place next week on the Amazon files Yes.